Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I'm going to talk about something a little bit different today and maybe to a few different people than we normally speak to. If you're a realtor, maybe thinking of becoming one, or maybe you're just curious about what it's really like to be a realtor, today's video is talking to you. I'm going to break down the five best things about being a realtor. Obviously, I love real estate. And then the five bad things, and then the five even worse things. I'm Lisa Salt with Remax Fern and Salt Fowler. I've been selling real estate in the North Okanagan Shoe Shop since 1993, and I'm going to dive into the good, the bad, and the ugly of a career in real estate. Never thought I'd be in real estate. You think I can handle it? All right, let's kick things off with the good stuff, because let's be honest, there's a lot to love about being a realtor. I mean, I think so anyways. First up, and I would say the number one reason people want to get into this business that we call real estate, and that is flexibility. This career offers a freedom that is hard to find anywhere else. You want to take a Monday off? Sure, it's your choice. You want to take a week off? You want to take a month off? That's fine. You're totally in control of your schedule. And that is totally perfect for those who don't love or can't do a traditional nine to five. Maybe you have young kids. Maybe you have a shift working husband or wife. Maybe you're lazy. I don't know. I love these lazy Saturdays. It's Wednesday, Homer. <laughs> Flexibility in this business is huge. Now saying that, it's one of the great parts of the business. However, it's also one of the worst parts too, because the flexibility can lead some people to watch Netflix all day when they should be working. Just because you have a license doesn't mean you're making sales. And anyways, I'm not here to talk about that part. We're talking about the good. Real estate is flexible. You're your own boss. You have your own business. You make your own hours. Now that leads us to good thing number two, which is income potential. Now, if you don't watch Netflix all day when you should be picking up the phone, the sky is literally the limit for your paycheck. Real estate isn't capped like a salaried job. You're not necessarily trading time for dollars like a wage. Sometimes you trade time for no dollars, actually, but that we'll talk about that later. If you're dedicated, skilled, motivated, maybe just a little bit lucky, you can earn as much as you want. Plus the feeling of closing that sale, there is nothing like it. The thrill of the deal is real. Brian, five sales this week, you're killing it. Yeah. Third, and maybe, you know what, this probably should have been first, the joy and the satisfaction and the thrill of helping people during significant moments in their lives. Buying or selling a home for people is huge and being part of that is incredibly rewarding. You're not just a salesperson, you're a guide through one of the most important financial decisions people make with generally people's most important and expensive asset that they may ever own. This point alone makes real estate worthwhile for sure in my books. Number four, how about the variety? No two days are ever the same in real estate. One day you're hosting an open house, the next you're negotiating offers or meeting with first time buyers and the list goes on. It goes on and on and on. And although there are things that you definitely should be doing each and every day, talking to people, prospecting, the sum total of each day is never boring. It's always changing. Every day is just a little bit different. Now, finally, on the good side, number five, building your business. You're building something that's yours. As a realtor, you're essentially creating your own business. It's a chance to build something lasting and that can and should be deeply satisfying. And that is whether you're working as an individual realtor, whether you're in a team or part of a group like ours, you're still building your own business. It's just a little bit different how you do it in each of these scenarios. However, it's all up to you what you make of the opportunities presented to you. It's all a choice. Now let's move on to the challenges, the five bad things about being in real estate, because yes, there are a few, well, there's five real estate may look glamorous, but it definitely has its rough edges. First, let's look at the unpredictable income part. No, we don't trade time for dollars. We don't get paid X number of dollars for an hour. And because we're commission only salespeople, some months are great and others not so much. Come on, Chris, you want to lose another sale? Aren't you back more? <sighs> it can definitely be hard to budget and plan without a steady paycheck, especially if you're the sole income earner. You have to be comfortable with a financial roller coaster and have a good nest egg to fall back on in these bad months. 
Second, let's talk about work-life balance, or I guess I probably should say the lack thereof. Real estate doesn't follow the nine to five like we talked about. It's nights, it's weekends, it's even holidays can become work days. Well, holidays do become work days, especially if that's what it takes to close a deal. That is just the way it is. I always tell people that real estate is a lifestyle. It's not a career, it's not a J-O-B, it's not a job, it is a lifestyle. I I don't know, Brian, I I don't know if I'm a real estate investor. Well, you might surprise yourself. I mean, I didn't think I'd ever be friends with iced tea. You live it every day. You live it every day, you live it every night, you live it every weekend. That's just what you do and it becomes who you are. Third, let's talk about the emotional stress. Deals can fall apart. Clients can be demanding, believe it or not. And that roller coaster income that can lead to sleepless nights. You have to have strategies to manage stress and not take things personally. And how do you do that? Well, you just have to remember, it's not about you. If people reject you, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting your service. They're not rejecting you personally. You just can't take it personally. You have to find some strategies to bring it down leave it at the office as best as you can. Otherwise, you're gonna drive yourself nuts. Number four, you'll work long hours, often with no guaranteed result. You might spend weeks working with a client. You might spend months or years working with a client only to have them back out at the last minute. Yes, it's frustrating, especially when you've invested so much time and effort, but again, it's not about you. You have to do what's best for your client. If that's what's best for them, then that's what's best for them. The really frustrating part is when that isn't the case. We don't write contracts subject to people changing their mind. But sometimes people change their mind. You've got 72 hours after closing to rescind the purchase state law. And then it's all on you to get them out of the agreement, out of this otherwise enforceable contract. Yeah, I've changed my mind. I don't want this house anymore. Okay, well, how are we gonna do that? And then if you can't do it or don't do it, then you are the bad guy. So yes, it's frustrating, but sometimes you just have to realize you're gonna work for free. The plus of this business being flexible and being able to write your own paycheck, well, sometimes it doesn't get written. And lastly, number five, let's talk about market dependence. Real estate is heavily influenced by the economy. When the market is hot, life is good. There's nothing like it. Like in 2021, holy cow, you just, it it was amazing and exciting and fun. But during the downturns, oh man, it can get tough. And adapting to these changes is a skill that you have to master. That's that roller coaster of real estate. I think realtors are very similar to that meme about the oil patch. Please, Lord. Just give me one more boom, and I promise, I promise that I won't piss it away next time. It's a little bit like realtors. Realtors don't have a tendency to save during the good times, but you have to become a master of saving in the good times if you're gonna survive the downturns. All right, we've covered the good, we've covered the bad. Five good, five bad, and here's where we get into the ugly. This is the side of real estate that you won't see on these HGTV shows, these reality shows that really, I mean, you must know, they're not really reality, right? I had so much fun make-believing I was a TV realtor today. Let's talk about number one. Let's talk about the cutthroat competition. Yes, real estate can be cutthroat. You're often vying for clients and listings, and that can lead to intense, sometimes even ruthless competition with other realtors, whether they're in your office or not in your office. I remember when I was getting into real estate back in 93, and my mom said, you know, I talked to so-and-so and she got out of the business. It was just, it was too competitive. It was too cutthroat. It's not good for you. It's not good for your health. You shouldn't do this. Because the people that you love always want to protect you, right? Of course, I didn't want to be protected. I was gonna, I, I was gonna make it no matter what. This is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to have my own business. This is what I wanted to do. And I didn't really notice that it was super competitive. I remember thinking, I don't know what that woman's talking about. I don't know why she got out of real estate. This is a great business. But you know, I kept my nose to the grindstone. I just worked. I just worked and I didn't worry about what everybody else did. I just 
focused on what I was doing and I didn't focus on what everyone else was doing. I think it's a lot different today. I think with social media, people who are on social media and watch that a lot, they can't help but see how well everybody else is doing or how at least well that person is making out like they're doing on social media, whether they are or whether they aren't. And so I think that even makes that competition even more than it used to be for me when I started. But it is a competitive business and yes, it can be cutthroat. And yes, most times I wish it were different, but that's just part of the ugly. Second, let's talk about difficult clients. Like I mean, difficult clients. Not everyone's easy to work with and some clients will definitely test your patience and test your professionalism. And you have to know when to set boundaries with people like this. Anyone who deals with the public, anyone in the service industry will know what I'm talking about. Sometimes people can be, whew, sometimes people can just be not nice. And unfortunately, that's what we tend to focus on. Oh, this is what happened today. This is what happened last week. When in fact, there was that one person that really pushed your buttons, but there was 10 great people that you also dealt with. And those are the ones that we stay in the business for. You just have to focus on the good ones. Focus on the ones that really want your help and want to work with you. I always tell people, if you're getting into one of those days where the world, the real estate world is bringing you down, pick up the phone and talk to someone who loves you. And when I mean someone who loves you, I mean like a client that you had a great experience with. Well, it could be your mother or your grandmother too, but phone a client that loves you and it will remind you how great this business is. Ugly number three, rejection. Ooh, you might lose a client to another agent or a deal might fall through at the last minute. All these terrible things that happen. Someone could steal your client. Real estate requires <laughs> thick skin because rejection is part of the job, whether we like it or not. We always tell people when we're interviewing, you've got to have rhino skin. And people don't really, I don't think they really get that until they've had the first person that's lied to their face. Again, we're dealing with huge amounts of money. People are emotional. And as we know, when emotion goes up, intellect goes down. And so people, many times they're making decisions and they're saying things out of emotion, out of anger, out of frustration, out of sadness, whatever it happens to be. In fact, a lot of times we're counselors, we're psychologists, we're not just realtors, we're not just the people that bring the transaction together. We're, we're supposed to be the facilitators, but many times we're psychologists too. And thick skin, rhino skin, it's just part of being a realtor. You just have to let that stuff flow off your back and you just got to keep going and just put one foot in front of the other. Fourth, let's talk about the legal side. There are rules and regulations to follow and a simple mistake could lead to legal issues or lawsuits. We feel that every day. And especially in BC, holy cow, you really need to be very careful and thorough to protect yourself and your clients. Every time we turn around in BC right now, there's another form, there's another disclosure, there's another disclosure about a disclosure and maybe a disclosure about another disclosure about another disclosure. Like it's getting ridiculous. I remember when we bought a place in California, the file was this thick, like, man, that is ridiculous. I'm sure glad we aren't like California. Well, guess what? We're like California now. Maybe it's not two inches thick. Maybe the file's only an inch thick. But man, that file is getting thicker and thicker and thicker with the new regulations coming out all the time. Our goalpost as realtors is always changing. And that's why it's so important. If you think that you're going to get into real estate and be a part-time agent and sell to your friends and family and that's it and, you know, work part-time and, and just, you know, relax the rest of the time or have a second job, this is not a part-time profession because you have to keep up on all these new legal forms and regulations and everything that's constantly coming your way. Part-time is not for real estate. You have to protect yourself and your clients, like I said. And lastly, number five, let's talk about the isolation. Real estate is a lonely business. You may spend a lot of time on the road. You may spend a lot of time working alone in your office, in your home office. Building a network or joining a team can help 
but the lonely hours are still a reality. Again, one of the great things is you're building a business for yourself. However, you're building a business for yourself by yourself. Whether you're with a team, whether you're with a group, it doesn't matter, it is still your career. And let me tell you one thing, it is lonely at the top. Other realtors don't like being outsold by other people. So if you're gonna be at the top of the heap, you're not gonna make a lot of friends. Even if you keep your nose clean, doesn't matter. You can follow all the rules by being kind and polite and respectful of others, but competition breeds jealousy. It's lonely at the top. And there you have it. The good, the bad, and the ugly of being a realtor. This business is not for everyone, but for those who love it, like I do, the rewards are far worth the challenges. Whether you're in the business right now or just curious about maybe getting in the business or just curious about the business, I hope this gave you a real look behind the scenes. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments below, what do you think is the best or worst part of being a realtor? I wanna know. See you next time. Just